Hey, Mike Filipov here from practiceguitarnow.com. In this video, I'll show you a simple tip that makes your sweep picking sound better and cleaner at faster tempos. Now, one common problem you might run into as you practice five string arpeggios like this is that it's hard to articulate the lowest notes of the arpeggio, the ones that are played on the bottom three strings like this. Those notes in particular generally sound less clear as the speed increases. And this happens for a couple of reasons. First, as you play faster, and this is true regardless of what the technique is, it's simply harder to hear which notes are clean and which ones are not clean. And second, and this is specific to sweep picking, the lowest notes of arpeggios are generally harder to articulate, especially if you use the neck pickup as you generally should when you sweep pick you need to use very precise articulation on those lower notes to make sure every note is heard clearly. So how do you clean up the articulation of the lowest notes of your arpeggios? Well, the most common way is to simply isolate the problem area and repeat it over and over like this. And this is a perfectly fine approach, especially if you're newer to sweep picking and just getting the technique down, but as you get more and more advanced, you tend to get less and less out of this kind of practicing because you already know the fundamentals of the technique and you improve the fastest when you practice the problem area in a very specific context. So what you need to do is what I call emphasize the problem rather than isolate it. I'm still going to play the full arpeggio over and over, but as I get to the hardest spot, the lowest notes that need to be emphasized, I'm going to repeat them over and over several times before continuing with the rest of the arpeggio. Sounds like this. So as you can hear, that's exactly what I was doing. I was repeating the lowest notes several times, then going all the way up the arpeggio, going all the way back down the arpeggio, and continuing on and on in that fashion. And this does a couple of very good things for your technique. First of all, it gives your ear a longer period of time to listen to the lowest notes at faster speeds. And this is very important because normally when you play arpeggios fast, in the typical way where you just go through the notes all the way up and all the way back down, you only have a fraction of a second to listen for the articulation of the lowest notes, and that's not enough time. But here, you have a lot more time to listen to the articulation of each note. You can make some corrections in real time as you're repeating the lowest notes over and over to clean them up and then proceed to the rest of the arpeggio and then descend. And the second benefit here is that no time is wasted practicing something in isolation first and then in context later. You're combining both practice methods together to give you the best of both worlds. You're fixing the problem and then you don't have to practice it in context later because you have been practicing it in context from the very beginning. Now, don't get me wrong, practicing something in isolation is definitely important, especially if you're first learning something for the very first time and you need to focus on the very, very fundamentals of technique. Then you definitely have to isolate something and put it under a microscope and repeat it over and over to get the fundamentals down. But if you already have the fundamentals in place and simply need to iron out a little mistake that you're noticing, something is not clean, using the emphasis technique rather than the isolation technique helps you get that result a lot faster. Another great application of the idea of emphasizing the difficulty is to arpeggios that require you to roll your fingers across several strings. Here's one example of such an arpeggio. <laughs> In this arpeggio, I have to roll my middle finger across three strings, strings four, three, and two. And if you play this arpeggio the way most guitar players play it, and the way I just played it, by going all the way up, all the way down, all the way up, all the way down, it becomes quite difficult at faster speeds to know when the roll is not perfectly clean. It becomes even harder to know why the roll is not perfectly clean, and it becomes almost impossible to make the right adjustments with your hands in real time, meaning without having to play slower, that allow you to make the roll sound cleaner. But if you use this technique of emphasizing the difficulty that I explained in this video, this problem becomes much easier to fix. Here's an example. So 
as you could hear, I was repeating the rolling motion many more times for each full repetition of the entire arpeggio. And this allowed my ears more time to notice any imperfections in my playing and allowed me to direct my hands to make the right adjustments in real time to clean things up and to make things sound better. And so when I go back to playing the normal arpeggio by just going all the way up and all the way down, it's going to feel much easier and it will sound much better. <laughs> So start using this idea of emphasizing the difficulty of your guitar playing problems and of course apply it to all contexts of your guitar playing and practicing, not just to arpeggios or sweep picking, but to scales, scale sequences, chord changes, songs you practice, anything you're working on where you have a problem or a challenge that you don't quite know how to solve, use this idea of emphasis on the problem and you will notice that it becomes much easier to identify what is going on and how to fix it so your improvement becomes much more rapid. Now, there's another level of how you approach solving your guitar playing problems that goes beyond the idea of isolation, emphasis, and goes into the much deeper territory of what I call exaggerating the difficulty. And that is where you have a problem where you just don't really understand what is going on and how the problem even came to be and what you need to do to fix it. And this is where you pull out the big microscope and learn how to blow up the problem massively and exaggerate it so it becomes very, very easy and very obvious for you to know what is going on, how the problem got into your playing, and what you need to start doing to fix it as quickly as possible. And I made a whole separate video on that topic of exaggerating the difficulty of your problems, which is on my website. It's totally free. There's a link to it on the screen right now. So go and check it out and learn all about how to use this third approach of exaggerating the problem that you're having in your guitar playing so that you have these tools, the isolation tool, the emphasis tool, and the exaggeration tool to approach solving your guitar playing problems as quickly and as effectively as possible. So go and check out that video right now, learn how to use these tools, apply them, have fun practicing, and I'll see you in the next video.